Ko Haloyim La Abanawa Yahawa Bahasham Hamashiach Yahawa Shai Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that rule very well and teach very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Kazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. Finally, I'd like to give a quick shout out to you sincere Achim and Akwa. That's Hebrew for you brothers and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. To y'all, I'd like to say Shalom. That's Hebrew for peace. This is the Ak Alayah, also Hebrew for the brother Elijah. And I'm here through this prayer and power of Yahweh Shah with a quick lesson uh, to the sincere elect, of the, or should I say the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. And uh, without too much else to say, as y'all can see by the title, uh, the name of this lesson being The Veil, right? And uh, without too much else to say, uh, we're going to hop into the scriptures and Lord willing, this be edifying. All right. So this is the book of Exodus chapter 34. And we're going to start at verse 27. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, right? Was was commonly and was widely known as the Ten Commandments, the law says the commandments of the Heavenly Father. We know there there is more than just Ten Commandments. However, you know, it's commonly known from this account, you know, people know, uh, you know, what is going on, what was happening, or what should I say was being talked about, referred to in the scripture. All right. For those of y'all who don't know, this is after uh, the Heavenly Father had carved out the, the commandments on stone out of the rock via the chariot, the, the angels, you know, they shut out, you know, basic concentrated, concentrated fire, a.k.a. like laser beam technology. And they basically carved out uh, the side of the mountain and gave Moses the commandments, which, like I said, he ended up throwing down and breaking and destroying. So the Lord has him up on the mountain, writing them all over again by hand this time. Right. And as we continue on, it says Exodus 34 and 29. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in, in Moses's hand. When he came down from the mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. Right. So after Moses, Moses is coming down from the mountain, uh, his face literally was shining which he didn't even see. He didn't he didn't realize his face was shining while he talked with the Israelites, but the Israelites saw his face shining, right? It says in verse 30, and when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold the skin of his face shone. Right? It's saying shine, right? It says and they were afraid to come nigh him. They were scared at first. They didn't know what was going on. They had never seen something like this before, right? It says in verse 31, and Moses called unto them and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him and Moses taught with them. Right. Like I said, I guess I kind of got ahead of myself. But as it says, man, Moses called the rulers to, to him and, and he began to talk with them, to converse with them. Right. It says and afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord Yahweh Shai had spoken with him in Mount Sinai until Moses had done speaking with them. He put a veil on his face, right? So Moses was revealing everything the Lord spoke to him. Well, I say everything, but he basically said what the Lord told him to speak unto them after writing the commandments down. Because truly the Lord, you know, gave uh, Moses e elite level wisdom while he was up on that mountain, man. You know, certain things that only he was to know. You know, the scriptures talk about how the Lord dealt with Moses face to face, you know, basically declared plainly unto Moses clearly what would happen in these times that we're living in now in the times that have already passed and in the times to come. Right. The future, especially in regards to the heavenly kingdom that's going to be established on the earth. Right. The Lord revealed those things to Moses, man. 
you know. But as the scripture says, as Moses was speaking to Aaron and, and the other rulers of the congregation, it says that he put a veil over his face, right, to cover up how his face was shining. You know, as it says in verse 34, Exodus 34 and verse 34, it says, but when Moses went in before the Lord, Yahweh Shai, to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out and he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of his face, the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him, right, to the Lord once again. So basically going to show you uh, the original account to, to what we're basically about to get into. And like I said, Lord willing, this be edifying unto you guys. Um, the wisdom of the Lord, you know, causes, you know, should I say, and, and like I said, just stick with this account because I want you guys to understand what I'm saying. The the response or the reaction from Moses receiving wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, it caused his face to shine. Literally, it affected his physical appearance, right? So much to show um, that the, the light was being so bright, he had to uh, put a veil up over his face just for the children of Israel to be able to speak with him, to actually listen and understand what he was saying. You know, because the light shining unto them being too much, you know, they weren't able to, you know, I would even say <laughs> fully listen and pay attention. Like if you think about it, imagine you're talking to somebody and you're seeing them shine literally right in front of you. You're going to be thinking in your head, dang, this man literally shining. How did he get himself to shine? What is he doing? Is this a trick? Is, you know, you're not even listening to what he's saying, right? You're not even paying attention to the things that he's talking about, but you're just, you know, you're distracted. <laughs> so to speak and especially with the israelites being your so-called black Hispanic, and native american indians so-called we can clearly easily believe that you know our people are easily distracted the israelites are easily distracted so seeing moses face shine like that hey ain't no telling how big of a distraction that was man it was so much so like i'm saying as the scripture said that moses had to put a veil over his face he had to cover his face up you know, and I say all that to tie into my point I'm about to make going into how even in these times, even like the Apostle uh, Paul made the comparison, even in these times when Moses is referred to, when the things that Moses talked about and prophesied of even, you know, when those things are spoken and said, it's like that veil is upon his very words, because yet and still uh, Israel is not able to behold and to truly understand, you know, the wisdom of Moses, especially in regards to their salvation, their deliverance, you know, you know, as a matter of fact, let me get this quick preset really quickly. This is uh, just showing you that the scriptures refer to uh, the wisdom of the Lord as light, right? This is Proverbs chapter six and verse 23. It says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life, right? So the, the law says in the commandments is it, it, a light, you know, like like I was just making the comparison of uh, Moses being up on that mountain. He was he was given light itself, man. He, he was given light itself, as it says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. You know, Moses having a hand right all, all those laws said in the commandments given by the Lord. You know, what you, what you see is, is literally it caused even his face to shine, you know. And, and I think about other examples as well, like how uh, the Lord Yahweh Shai was transfigured on that mount, you know, before Peter. And um, I forget who the other brother was that was with him. But the Lord Yahweh Shai transfigured himself before them and his entire body was shining. You know, he, he showed them that that spiritual body that he has, man. And, and it was it was like I said, with the Lord Yahweh Shai being the full embodiment of the law, you know, which the scriptures testify of he, his entire body was shining, you know, even though back then it was only Moses' face that was shining. But yet still the law, the law itself is light, even pursuing the Proverbs 6 to 23. Matter of fact, let me get Isaiah chapter eight really quickly. And then we're going to tie into 
the Apostle Paul, we're going to get the Apostle Paul's words on making the comparison between Moses on the mount when he had to cover his face with the veil, you know, just like right now in these times, the words of Moses currently have a veil over, um, uh, causes a veil to be over some of you, you people's hearts, you Israelites hearts, man. When you guys hear this gospel, when you guys hear this truth, you're unable to perceive it truly and understand it through the Holy Spirit because or once again, that veil is upon you. You know, this is Isaiah 8 and 20. It says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Right. So when we hear doctrines and beliefs and opinions, even and emotions, contrary to what the scriptures detail and explain to be the true gospel, which is the Lord Yahweh Shai being, you know, the the ultimate sacrifice, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, right? Being the mediator between the Israelites, between us and our heavenly father, Abinawa Yahweh, right? If anyone speaks contrary to that gospel, even parts of the gospel that, you know, explain to us how through the Holy Spirit, we understand what the mark of the beast is to be. You know, everyone that speaks not according to this word is because there is no light in them, right? Truly the Holy Spirit power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai isn't resting upon them, man. You know, it's not dealing with them in regards to truth, in regards to the 100% truth that the Lord has given, you know, his servants, man, starting with the elders and apostles of GMS on down, man. You know, those who follow and that hold that true testimony, that true gospel, right? And once again, let me make this clear for the point of me coming here. The scriptures deal with light, literal physical light as well, man. That's why it says if they don't have the truth in them, if they speak not according to this word, they have no light, right? So now, with that being said, let's go to 2 Corinthians, man. Hopefully y'all are following with me. I don't want to sound like a broken record re repeating the same points over and over again. So I'm just going to say and we're going to keep rocking and rolling through the spirit. And like I said, Lord willingness is making sense and it's edifying. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm starting at verse 12. It says, seeing then that we have such hope, right? We use great plainness of speech, All right? So we're not using, you know, big words to try to confuse you like the Christianity church does. We're not answering and ignoring questions. Should I say we're not ignoring the questions that are posed to us? No, we're ready and we're willing to answer them with great plainness of speech we make sure the truth is is as simplistic as possible it's as simple to understand as possible you know because we're not using any you know gimmicks or fancy tricks to try to deceive or persuade people no we just declare this truth plainly you know as we were commanded to do however spiritually we understand there's only so much that we can do because it's not it's not us who causes, you know, believers to be converted and to cause the spirit to quicken. It's the, the spirit power of Yahweh Hashem Shai that causes the spirit to quicken, man. You know, that part is outside of our hands. However, this, uh, the Apostle Paul is about to elaborate a little bit more on that to why, you know, why some of y'all can't get this gospel, although it's, it's made so plain. This is 2 Corinthians 3 and 13. It says, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, right, in regards to the law. Now, he did use the word abolished, meaning not necessarily that the law says the commandments are done away with. However, he's speaking spiritually to those who can receive it in regards to that condemnation, that judgment of the law that has been abolished, right, through the, the blood and the sacrifice of the Lord Yahweh Shai, because those who follow the land whithersoever he goeth, and those that hold his true testimony, we understand that he is coming back to, to bring us deliverance and salvation, man, to save us from the from the judgments of the law, you know, and, and to give us the, the kingdom that was promised unto us. And when I say, and don't get me wrong, when I say save us from the judgment of the law, it does not mean that we aren't going to be judged. It just means our judgment is not death. It means that we have been uh, graciously and merc mercifully received into this new covenant you know we, we've been given like once again the blessing of life you know and not damnation in which the two-thirds of our people will receive you know for those y'all who can understand it it says in verse 14 2 corinthians 3 and 14 
It says, but their minds were blinded, right? <laughs> their, but their minds were blinded. For unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Hamashiach Yahushua. Once again, for those of y'all who can understand and who can see who the Lord has blessed with that eye sound, with that, that, that spiritual power to be able to see and perceive and to hear and understand this gospel. You know, it says, let's read it again. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 13 again. Second Corinthians 3 and 13. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Once again, in regards to the law, he covered up his face to, to not show the effects of the law. That light was not able to shine unto them so they, so they could understand and believe. No, Moses had to put a veil over his face that covered up, that hid the light, you know, which... It was all it was all set up through the spirit. The Lord deals with and he sets up those to receive his gospel to whom he chooses, which is what the word elect even goes back to chosen. You know, it says verse 14, second Corinthians three and 14. But their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away. So it's, it's just like Moses still got that veil over his face in regards to this truth to some of y'all not being able to receive it you know because it's truly it plain it's plain and simple truly the lord said what his commandments were he he laid out what his will is and only a, a certain amount of souls that were chosen and set up to receive it and follow and understand and believe are going to do just that and be saved upon it you know but those of y'all who can't understand the way those of y'all who can't see the light those of y'all who can't understand this gospel this is why we don't get beat up about it because we know at the end of the day that that was the lot that the Lord set up for you. That is the judgment the Lord set up for you, you know, and you're going to you're going to see the fruits of your works in this season man. in this time. The Lord is going to declare plainly before you if or should I say who his chosen really are, you know, he's going to make it known whom his servants truly are, man. It's going to it's going to be uh, declared plainly. It's going to be as if that veil is going to be taken away in that time. You know, it says, second, finish in verse 14, second Corinthians three and 14, but their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the old Testament, which veil is done away in Hamashiach, Yahweh right? The anointed one, right? Which, you know, when it comes to certain prophecies of the old Testament, you, you guys still can't receive it in regards to, like I said, the kingdom of heaven, who that set up for, who it was set up by, how that's going to affect the earth, which is where it's going to be established. You know, who's not going to make it, who's not going to be delivered in these times, what um, cert certain judgments are that are set up through the spirit. A lot of that is written in the Old Testament, man. And you guys still can't understand it. You still can't get it. Not even with the Lord Yahweh Shai coming. And giving us more scriptures to go off of, setting up more men through the Holy Spirit to prophesy and to declare the truth, even including uh, John the Revelator, who prophesied of the, the mark of the beast, the MOTB. Y'all still can't even get his writings, man, you know, but truly through the Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, the Lord Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew meaning he is the redeemer. He is salvation. You're right. Through Yahweh Shai, he's made, made it known unto us, you know. He's, he's declared plainly what the Old Testament, what Moses was referring to. He declared plainly what his apostles and what his disciples are going to be teaching and making plain. You know, he, he's revealed it all unto us. As the scriptures say, we see through uh, through a glass darkly, roughly paraphrasing, everything the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahshua declared for us to know in regards to our salvation. And these times, we know it all. We have that 100% truth, that 100% gospel, man. We have it, you know. Let's continue on, man. It says in verse 15, uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Right? Y'all don't want to hear the Old Testament prophets, man. Y'all don't want to hear Moses' words, right? Why? Truly at the end of the truly at the end of the day, it's because they all point towards Yahweh Shai, the one whom you hate, you know, the one whom you despise, the one whose ways you want no part of, you know. Y'all have condemned Yahweh Shai and his gospel and his kingdom and his and his people, his servants, his children. 
and he, and even his God, his heavenly power, Abinah Yahweh. You know, you guys would none of that. You know, so therefore, that veil shows that it's still upon your hearts. And I'm speaking to my people, the Israelites, man, truly the wicked of of my people, whom the Lord has condemned, whom the Lord has rejected. You know, whom the Lord has set up in this lot and this time to be what He's called. Um, uh, I know the word I'm about to say on top of that, a uh, reprobate. That's the word I'm looking for, man. The, whom the Lord has set your lot up in this life to be a reprobate. When you look at that word reprobate, matter of fact, let's get it real quick. When you look at that word reprobate, it literally says one rejected of God, right? Reprobate definition, right? Let's get it real quick. It says reprobate, right? Okay, my fault. I'm not sure if it said it, but reprobate, right? It says an unprincipled person often used humorously or affectionately, right? It says uh, number two, the arcade meaning in Calvinism, it says a sinner who is not of the elect and is predestined to damnation, right? Unprincipled, right? Let's let's get the blue letter, man. I think that's really all I'm thinking about. I mean, that second archaic, it applies. We're not Calvinists. Um, Calvinists do take bits and pieces of the truth and manipulate it and twist it for their own purpose and intent, which is the Bible condemns. However, um, truly a reprobate person is a sinner who's not of the elect and is predestined to damnation. That's that's a fact. That's a, that's of a truth, right? Let's get reprobate. Uh, let me look at the scripture that I said real quick. So lucky. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Romans 1 and 28. All right, let's get this word reprobate in the blue letter so y'all can see and be edified. Even if it, even if this is condemning some of y'all, that's your own conscience. Which the scriptures talk about your conscience condemning you, you know? Let's get this. Reprobate. All right, here we go. Strong's G96. Adakimas. Adakimos. Adakimos, right? That's in the Greek. And it means what? Not standing the test. Not approved. The Lord didn't allow you to stand through his test. He didn't approve you based upon your, those results, man. It says, that which does not prove itself such as it ought. Unfit. Unproved. Spurious. Reprobate, right? Sean's definition, a castaway. Rejected. Right. These are all words that uh, that hit on the point. The Lord has casted you away from his wisdom, knowledge and understanding, man. He's rejected you from his salvation. You are no longer being considered because the scriptures talk about all of Israel being called, many being called, but few being chosen. That few is that elect, that remnant whom the Lord promised and set up from the beginning to to understand the gospel, to understand this Bible all the way through. You know, there might be parts that you might have to brush it back up on and get refreshed or get, you know, more wisdom. But we, as far as the gospel, this truth is, hey, man, we got it. You know, we understand. Right. Let's let's read this again. Verse 16 and we'll finish verse 18 and we'll wrap it up, man. It's 2 Corinthians 3 and 16. Nevertheless, uh, actually, I'm going to read verse 15 again. 2 Corinthians 3 and 15. But even unto this day, right, right now, right, what's today's day? According to Esau, it's February 12th, Sunday, February 12th, right? Currently 720, right? E even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts, right? Because truly Moses prophesied of the coming of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. He definitely did, man. And so did other uh, men with wisdom prophesy of, man. You know, it, it, it was revealed unto them. However, Unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their heart, still upon your heart, even right now, listening to this. No matter what you can do, no matter what you try to do, the Lord it has left that veil upon your mind. This gospel is hard for you to receive, hard for you to understand, you know. Like I said, even when it comes to something as simple as the mark of the beast, the Lord has your understanding blinded upon that. We know it's the RFID chip, but ask anybody else, they're going to they're gonna tell you it's sleeping with white women. Ask somebody else, they're going to tell you it's the dollar bill. Ask somebody else, they're going to tell you it's Christianity. Ask somebody else, 
they're going to tell you there is no Mark of the Beast. John the Baptist was a bowl of Captain Crunch. You know, that's all the type of madness and folly you're going to hear from anyone else because they have not the truth. The veil is upon their hearts, man. You know, but the true men of the Lord, we have the understanding. We have the gospel, man. And, 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 and Lord willing, we be of that number that receives that mercy, that receives that great deliverance so far beyond all that we have looked for, man. Lord willing, we be of that number. But yet still at the end of the day, we can declare you plainly without a shadow of a doubt what the gospel is man whether you can hear or forbear or not you know or or so right it's so like it says second corinthians 3 and 17 it says now the lord is that spirit right the lord yahweh truly is the spirit that that reveals unto us the gospel and his truth right it says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty he has freed us from these chains of darkness you know in, in regards to us uh, receiving the Holy Spirit again and re rehearsing and practicing those righteous acts. He has freed us from the bondage and captivity of our sins, of our iniquities, right? Because through the Lord Yahweh Shai, do we believe we have now a chance again for repentance, for true repentance, you know? And, and if you don't know what repentance is, man, there's videos on the channel that go into that. What is repentance or, or the power of repentance, you know? And basically what, what that means, what that looks like, how to do it in sincerity, you know. The, we're in a time right now where the Lord, Yahweh Shem El Shai, has given us the doorway and the liberty to repentance, man. And only a few of us are actually going to attain unto that wisdom, attain unto that knowledge, receive the understanding of it, and be saved through it, man. Scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation, you know. That includes not only watching for the prophecies to come according to the words of the Lord, but it also applies to, you know, the instructions he's given us in regards to how we are to conduct ourselves and what we are to do in these current times. You know, the Lord has declared it plainly unto us and we're going to trust in it and be obedient. You know, that includes teaching this gospel, this ministry, this work that we do day in and day out. You know, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, but we all with open face Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, right? And that truly, uh, that change that's gonna come that the scriptures are talking about from changing us from glory to glory, that's all being done through the Lord, Yahweh Shai, through his sacrifice, you know, what he did on that cross for us, uh, him being resurrected on the third day after. You know, and, and now seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Hey, man, we understand that we're going to be changed into Yahweh Shai's image, man. According to the words of the Lord, our bodies physically are going to be changed into the Lord Yahweh Shai's image. Our entire bodies are going to shine. Why? Because in that day and in that time, these sinful bodies that we currently live in, that we're subject to, that has us sinning every day, even though we desire to be righteous. And the Apostle Paul describes that as well. You know, if I do the thing that which I didn't want to do is sin dwelling within me, roughly paraphrasing, you know, the Apostle Paul went into that beautifully, you know, and just like we're reading now, the Apostle Paul describes the change that is coming to the sincere, hopeful elect, where the Lord Yahweh Shah is going to take these vile bodies, these wick this wicked, sinful flesh and, con and basically condemn it, man, put it to death. He's going to give us a spiritual, a righteous body where indwelleth righteousness, that's the coming of the kingdom of heaven, man, on the earth. Starting with that 144,000, man. And then and the rest of the, the, the great multitude as well. The Lord's going to change our bodies. And we're not going to be able to die anymore. We're not going to be able to sin anymore. A lot of y'all are scratching your heads right now trying to figure out what I'm talking about. If you can't understand it, repent, man. The veil is still upon your heart. Where the Lord has blinded your eyes, he's blinded your mind from perceiving and seeing the, the, the coming kingdom of his people, man, and, and the order and the likeness in which is going to be within the earth, you know, so I'm not going to drag this out too much longer. I know there's plenty of other precepts, you know, I probably could have gotten I'm pretty sure other brothers have precepts they probably wanted to grab. Lord willing, you know, you guys make videos on those precepts you thought of, Lord willing, the other precepts that I had, maybe I'll be able to come back and land back on this point and, and go, go in a little bit deeper, going a little bit more. Well, however, I hope this was edifying unto the sincere, hopefully, elect of the nation of Israel. And until next time, Shalom. Shalom.